Your latest screenwriting credit is long gone by, mm -hmm. and you you share credit with co co writing on that. Yes, with uh, Andrew Morgan. Yeah, he okay. was the director. Okay, great. Can you tell us what the story's about? Sure, it's about a a mother, an immigrant mother living in Middle America, and on the same day she finds out that her uh, visa, she's on a six month visa that that continually um, gets renewed and she finds out it's not going to be renewed and on the same day she finds out that her daughter was accepted into college but it's a it's a state school but because she's technically not a state resident she has to pay out-of-state tuition and she just can't afford it so she finds out all this information on the same day and basically has to figure out what is she going to do she sees the life that she wants for her daughter and why she came to America for it. And she sees that if she can't get her into this school, that it might not happen. And so after exhausting all of her options, she decides that she's going to rob a few banks. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's and when, I, and when I heard this story from Andrew, that's where I really leaned in. I was like, oh, she's going to rob some banks. Okay, that's when I really got... Um, interested and we were just talking over coffee about it we had some mutual friends that, that put us together and so we just decided to meet up and we'd kind of actually the, the meeting had been like scheduled and then rescheduled for like eight months that we were planning to just meet up and meet each other because we had some mutual friends from from our time in Atlanta and there was no sense of this is going to be a job or anything like that but I met up with Andrew and he's just telling me and he was sort of figuring out he was debating where to, what piece of information to lead with. Does she find out that she's going to get deported and that's the first piece of information? Or does she find out that her daughter got into school, a really nice uh, college, but can't afford it? And figuring out there. And we, we were just talking about it, so I sort of gave my two cents. And, and then a few days later, he goes, I really liked the way you were thinking about my story. Uh, would you be interested in doing a rewrite? And I said, yeah, that sounds cool. And sorry, was this based on a documentary that he and the, the actress producer had done it was, a documentary? With? It was not based on a specific uh, documentary, at least not, not to my knowledge. He, he uh, was very in, involved in some of the immigration issues and stuff going on at the time. And he'd also heard of a story about a group of women in Florida that were robbing banks without guns. They were just walking up quietly and just taking money from the tellers in a very quiet way. And he thought there was something fascinating about that. And so that's sort of how the, the, the bank robberies are very low key in the film. And he had kind of t taken some of these ideas uh, and teamed up with an actress that he knew well and he knew could pull off this this character, because it's a lot of it's a lot of her, and it's a lot of her in silence with herself, which is r really tough for a for a film to watch uh, for the the length of time that he was thinking we'd be on her without cuts. And I was a little hesitant at first, but after seeing it on the screen, I go, he he was right. She's magnetic, and everyone just you could watch her um, seemingly do nothing, and you should see everything going on, and that's. The character and that's what they knew and so i came in essentially as more of like a carpenter to, to help just build a few things that they were needed some work on and well we put the film together and he shot it in just a few weeks and i think it turned out great in where did you shoot it it was shot in indiana he found a small town that looked very much like the town that we were envisioning this happening in and he basically just leveraged the town as his pr production design and so everything you see in the film is was just discovered in the town very little had to be made um, and there was a lot of value in making it real and a place that people live and it looks like a place that this story would take place. And how did he know that town? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, because the trailer looks beautiful, and you can see it does seem very not Rust Belt, but you know, you just you, I envision a small town, and you'd set off camera that was one where maybe a factory had closed or people were. It just yeah, the the town, um, the town in the film is uh, supposed to look just sort of in its, its I'd say economic decline. And so I don't think the town he shot in necessarily looks exactly like the way it does in the film, but he did a good job of, if it, if it was a location that looked like it might be an economic, economic decline, that's the one he shot at. <laughs> and then the really great, great one right over there, just keep that off camera. And sure. so he did a really good job at, at shooting what felt like a real town that was uh, a, a factory might have closed in. And so he had already written the script. Sorry. Yeah. And you um, came in. And yeah, he had written. I think three drafts of the script. I, I think, I, I think it was the fourth fourth draft. Um, and I'm not qu quite sure because he really gave me a lot of freedom to m move things around in a very big way, and that was really one of the things that I think allowed us to actually finish when we did because he was already in pre-production and there was the shooting date already scheduled for the start and there were times when I was writing and he was in Indiana location scouting and I'd be writing the scene and I would get notifications we had a shared Dropbox with the location photos and I'd be seeing the locations fly in on my monitor of the thing I was actually writing oh, wow. so it was a very quick turnaround but at the same time there was a lot of sort of freedom and mobility there because I didn't have to think about a lot of these things because it's like, you know, interior laundromat. Um, I don't have to think about what this looks like because there's the photos, like I already know. And I already knew a lot of the pieces and I had the ability to move them around within the script. I just couldn't add uh, too much or take away too much because cast uh, actors had been cast and certain location deals had already gone through and it, just, it was gonna be too much work to pull those out, find new ones. And so it's so it's like someone um, giving you an erector set and no instructions on how to make it, but you can't, these are the pieces you have. And I kind of want it to look like this. And so Andrew knew his story very well. And so we were really able to move quickly in terms of making the screenplay something that supported that story because he knew it in and out and I was able to take the screenplay and I'd send pages every night and he'd get back to me every morning of, yes, that's great. Oh no, this, this isn't quite gonna work because here's why. And he was very quick with his notes and very succinct and spot on. And how long did the whole rewrite process take? Cause you said that was his third draft when he sent it to you? Yeah, about five weeks. Wow. Yeah, we did about a week and a half on a very rough outline, making sure that the, the big pieces were were there where we wanted and, and he was comfortable with me moving forward on an outline. And then once that got the thumbs up, then I had about three and a half weeks to do the draft. And of, of course it's all digital, but it very much felt like that last day of like, pa passing, but it's like running and it's like, here's the screenplay and someone grabs it and just like goes out and like, they were shooting it like two days later. And it was wild. I, I, um, I had some other stuff going on while they were shooting. So I was uh, every now and then getting like an update from the set or a question or two. But for the most part, they took it and ran with it. And um, I trusted Andrew with the story. He had been in that world much longer than I had. So I felt like, cool, they're taking care of it. And then a a couple months later, he showed me a rough cut. When he showed me the rough cut, it was, it had come together far quicker than I thought it would, and it looked fantastic. I only had two thoughts on it. I only had two notes. There was one thing at the beginning, and I said, I think this cut is just a, a frame or two too early because you can, you can hear her breath, but we're not seeing her. It was, it was something like that. Um, and then at the very end, there was a shot of the American flag. And if, if you see if you see the film, I think it deals with um, 
immigration issues, and even though the main characters um, are from another country, I, I feel like the film, and I told this to Andrew, is inherently American. It's, he's made a very American film, um, at least in my perspective. And I said, I think the shot of the flag near the end, I don't think you need it. I think we already feel this, and it feels just like one, one thing too far. And he goes, I was thinking that. Yeah, yeah. I. And so that was, we, we had both notes we had we'd like agreed on, and he was already kind of thinking about. And I said, but that's just my two cents. And if you want, you know, obviously you have a, have a vision for it, and I think it's, it's great. And he goes, well, no, I think, I think you're right. We'll, we'll take those two things, and it's pretty close to what the final cut is. Well, even in the trailer, she says, I can't go back. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen the film. Yeah. I'd love to, but uh, the trailer is excellent, and she says, I can't go back, and you feel it in that moment that there's probably many reasons, but you can tell this is her home now. She feels, you know, so I, I don't know if the American flag was, I didn't see that <laughs> part, but... Did you feel that it was too obvious or? Yeah, it was just, because it was just part of a, the shot was part of a montage and it was just some footage that he had picked up throughout the town. They were constantly just shooting B-roll and it gives the town a very, a real lived in feel. And so it was not in the script. And I just thought within this montage, all these images are specific and feel like kind of um, that classic kind of nostalgic feeling of America. So just to like put a shot on the flag, you just didn't need it because we are already having these images that were evoking America without saying, hey, did you get it by the way? Here's the American flag. Um, and so we, we just didn't need it. Talking about scripts being overwritten, it is a similar thing. It's like you, you're already communicating the idea that you want to communicate. You, it's not that this is changing anything, it's just you don't need it. And if you can ever simplify, always simplify. Because the audience is, at that point, they're just going, yeah, I get it, move on. What's, you know, give me the next piece of information. Wow, very cool. And the film screened in LA? It screened, the film premiered in New York at HBO's uh, New York Latino Film Festival and then uh, did a few other festivals. I was in England at the time of the New York premiere, so I, could, I couldn't attend. So the first time I saw it in, in a theater with an audience was at the, that film festival was the, it was so small, but um, so much, like the little after party thing. I, like I have never seen so much kind of money spent on little things. Like there was a um, remote control Cadillac Escalade that oh was goodness. delivering beers oh my goodness. throughout the party. And the most <laughs> bespoke uh, like gelato company <laughs> presenting these things. It was, it was, it was crazy. I, I was, I felt totally out of my element. <laughs> 